good evening everyone thanks for joining so today we have a presentation of mr mohan parsardi so before he start the presentation let me give a quick intro uh, so mohan sir uh, before even joining my mentorship he have a, a certification in jyotish uh, from national sanskrit university tirupati and despite that he taken effort to join our mentorship and uh, he spent a lot of time doing assignments projects and he learned that one topics so i really appreciate that so apart from that you can read um, sanskrit very well and you also have a strong hold in vedas and vedangas uh, so he he's he spent uh, almost like uh, three decades in middle east working in a commerce uh, related uh, job and right now he is retired and he is involved in most of the Uh, learnings of ancient uh, subjects so thank you sir thanks for joining us and uh, yeah presenting the topic today so today he took a very simple topic but very important topic uh, he is going to talk about shatbala and its importance and how to apply in the practical horoscope yes so over to you sir so you can continue from here thank you uh, to everyone uh, so this uh, topic is uh, quite interesting i felt uh, uh, this should uh, Uh, and just uh, it will be of interest to all to everybody uh, i will start the, the presentation with the prayer <coughs> guru reva gatir guru meva baje guru naiva sahasmi namo gurave na guru paramam shishurasti guru matirasti guru mama pahi guru Uh, start with us with applications on simple horoscope on sample horoscope i have taken two samples which we will deal later shad means six bhala means ten so if we combine both both are both these two words we get shad bhala which is which means six fold strength determining weakness of a planet in kundali requires careful analysis of shad bhala and other uh, shatbala score and other relevant factors uh, there are some indicators for a planet to be weak uh, one is uh, shatbala low shatbala score second is affliction third one is debilitation fourth one is combustion and fifth is retrogression retrogression so uh, these are the uh, astronomical uh, astrological uh, uh, terminology which we use Uh, for determining the strength of a planet, Shatbala is a uh, score. If a planet is less than thirty uh, in its score, it is considered to be weak, and uh, uh, it may struggle to manifest its uh, positive qualities. Afflictions. If a planet is said to be afflicted, when it is influenced by the malefic uh, planets, which will weaken the overall power, power of the power and ability of a planet debilitation the planet is said to be in debilitation when it is in a this weakest uh, uh, pl placement or position in the in the birth chart and it can affect the performance of the and performance and effectiveness of the planet combustion combustion occurs when a planet is in close proximity with sun uh, uh, and uh, it can diminish the strength of uh, the planet which is associated with sun retrogression retrogression is the uh, uh, terminology used when planets tend to exhibit weakened energy so uh, it it is nothing but slowing down of the motion of a planet uh, relative uh, relative to a planet which is moving uh, faster than the planet so there there may be some challenges in expressing the potential true potential of the planet which is retrograding shatbala score shatbala score provides astrological astrologers with valuable inputs about the relative strength and effectiveness of the planet it also helps the uh, overall balance of planetary influences and the and its impact on various aspects of life higher shatbala score suggests the planet is well placed and capable of producing good results the strength of planet is measured in scale from 0 to 60 with higher the score uh, higher the influence and higher the uh, 
the strength uh, power of the prana to uh, exert, exert itself. Shadmala score uh, above 30 is considered to be satisfactory, whereas the score above 40 is considered excellent. Saturn, which is also known as Shani, uh, it, uh, it is considered to be powerful when it has higher shad, uh, highest Shadbala. It governs the discipline, hard work, long-term success, financial stability, and spiritual growth. The Shadbala scores are considered to be uh, the plants with low Shadbala score are considered to be weak, and it may struggle to manifest its positive qualities. The Shadbala score plays a crucial role in determining the suitable profession or career path of an individual. This, the strong planners with the uh, uh, higher value of Shadbalas also uh, with the relevant houses associated with in the Natal Batsa uh, indicate success and fulfillment in specific professional uh, domains. Planners with higher uh, the sun, sun, the planners with the higher sh sh uh, Shadbala uh, score in order as below. Sun is said to be very powerful when the shadow of Pinda is five or more rupas. Moon becomes very strong when its shadow of score is six or more rupas. Puja becomes shadow uh, powerful when it is uh, not less than five rupas. Buddha becomes uh, potent when its uh, shadow of Pinda is seven, ru uh, seven rupas or above. Guru, Sukra, Shani becomes powerful. When it shadbalas are 6.5, 5.5, and 5 rupees respectively, more and more respectively. So uh, then we talk about sthana bala, which is nothing but positional strength. A planet gets positional strength by virtue of its occupying a particular sign of zodiac. This may be exalted, debilitated, own, own house, molatari corona, friendly, neutral. Or enemy signs. The strength of a planet gets uh, the a planet gets due to its occupying certain degree in a sign is known as positional strength. The positional strength of planet consists of five components, namely Uchabala, Saptavar uh, Saptavarga Oja Oja Yuga Oja Yuga Bala, Kendra Bala, and the uh, Drekana Bala. Uchavala uh, is the is nothing but when the planet is in exaltation. So when the planet is in exaltation, it gets 60 60, 60 amsas. Uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, what is 60 amsa? Actually, it is the, the strength of uh, uh, the uh, shadbala. Shadbalas are measured in in terms of 60 amsas. So, Sashti means 60. Uh, so, so 60 uh, Sashtiams are obtained uh, for a planet which is in uh, exaltation sign. When the, uh, uh, at the same, same time, when the planet is in the debilitation, it get, gets the lowest uh, zero value of this uh, Sashtiamsas. For example, moon is moon at 33 degrees in Scorpio will get zero, de, uh, will get. Uh, Zero Sashtiamsas because which it is in debilitation in Scorpio. It gives three degrees when it is in uh, 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 in Rishabha at uh, three degrees. It is at the, in the Uchastana. It gets sixty Sashtiamsas. Uh, and also when it when it is in between the position uh, somewhere in between these two points, is Shadbala uh, Sashtiamsa vary, points varies. Uh, for example, if the moon is uh, in Leo, uh, it is uh, uh, the, the Leo. It will get uh, the planet will get thirty shasti amsas. Yeah. Then we go to Saptavarga Jabala. In a, the Saptavarga Jabala is nothing but uh, uh, it involves seven harmonic uh, charts, namely Rashi, Ora, Brekana, Saptamsa. Navamsa, Dadamsa, Trimsamsa. So in this chart, we uh, we look at what kind of sign a certain planet is located. If a planet occupies the Rasi chart in its uh, Mula Trikona sign, 
it gets 45 shashti amsa it is applicable only to this uh, the special rule is applicable only to, to rashi cut only if it is in its own size uh, it gets uh, 30 shashti amsas for example moon if it is in in uh, in uh, uh, in ka ka cancer katakarasi it gets uh, 30 shashti amsas if the if it is in a friendly uh, sign a great friendly sign it gets 22.5 uh, shashti amsas if the sign of uh, if it is in the sign of a friendly uh, house it gets uh, 15 shashti amsas in its neutral sign, it gets 7.5 shashti amsas. The sign of in, a, in the sign of an enemy house, it gets 3.75, and in the sign of a great yeah. enemy, it gets 1.875 shashti amsas. Then we go go to um, Oja Yudma Bala. What is Oja Yudma Bala? The, uh, this is the uh, concept which is. Uh, uh, which says that the planet gains strength because it, if, if it is in an even sign, it, uh, it, it gives an uh, idea about the, uh, the planet gaining strength or weak, uh, weak, getting weaker depending upon the, uh, the, the sign uh, which is odd or even or also in Navamsa. Moon and Venus gets 15 Shashti Amsas when they are in an even sign. The, these two planets are uh, female planets. And the, these planets also get 15 Shashti Amsas when they are in Navams, even Navamsa. The, in totality, Moon and Veena get, Venus gets 30 Shashti Amsas. They are located in even sign in Rasi as also as also as well as in Navamsa. The reason behind this is that the Moon and Sign are female planets and are strong when they are in female signs, that is even signs and Navamsas. Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn uh, get 15 Shashti Amsas when they are in uneven sign. And uh, they get 50, 15 Shashti Amsas when they are in Navamsa, uneven signs of Navamsa. The planets are male or neutral. Uh, if the planets are male or neutral and are strong in uh, their, these, uh, these are the planets which are male, uh, male and, are, uh, and are neutral and strong in, uh, and also strong in male signs. Kendra Bala, a, pl a planet in Kendra houses like 1, 4, 7 and 10, uh, the planets get 60 Shashti Amsas. The planet in the house of 2, 5, 8 or 11 gets 30 Shashti Amsas. A planet in the house of 3, 6, 9 or 12 gets 15 Shashti Amsas. Uh, the reasoning is that the planets uh, in Kendra houses can easily express themselves and are therefore strong. Then Drekanabala. To calculate the planets uh, uh, Drekanabala, they are divided, it is divided into masculine planets such as Sun, Jupiter and Mars, neutral planets such as Saturn and Mercury, and female planets uh, such as Venus and Mars, a Moon. If a male planet is in the Drakana 0 to 10 degree of whatever the sign, it gets it, uh, 15 Shashti Amsa is uh, 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 achieved. If neutral uh, planet is in the middle Drakana, whatever uh, sign, that means it is located between 10 to 20 degrees, uh, it gets 15 Shashti Amsa. If a female planet is located in the last Drakana, that is the last 10 degrees, whatever the sign it occupies, it gets 15 Shashti Amsas. So the reasoning is that the first Drakana of each planet is good for male planets, middle Drakana is good for neutral planets, and uh, uh, last Drakana is good for female planets. So now we add up all the Shashti Amsa values, and the result is the Sanabala. So this, this is how we, uh, generally the Sanabala, amongst, amongst all the Shatbala, Sanabala is having uh, greater uh, uh, strength. It, pro uh, it has got greater impact in the inner horoscope when the Sanabala values are higher. Then we go to uh, Digbala. Each planet is powerful when it is located in a certain direction. 
Dickman's directional strength. The Sun and Mars are powerful in south. The planets which are especially in the 10th house, these are the planets which are especially in the 10th house, Sun and the Mars. So they get higher strength. Then uh, Saturn, higher strength. Then uh, the planets which are in the southern part of the sky, uh, like uh, uh, Saturn is given the maximum Digbala. When it is in the well, uh, sorry, the these are the planets which are uh, which function especially well in the tenth house, and uh, the Saturn is is given maximum digbala when it is in the west, the seventh uh, that is in the seventh house. When it is in seventh house, the direction is uh, west. It, it gets maximum strength. Moon and Venus get maximum digbala when they when it is in north, that is uh, uh, in the fourth house. Mercury and Jupiter function well when they are in the first house. So this is how uh, the, uh, the strength is decided in the uh, Digbala or direction strength. So we go proceed to Kalabala. Kalabala consists of different factors such as Divaratri Bala, uh, Paksha Bala, Tribhaga Bala, Abdha Bala, Masa Bala, Vara Bala, Hora Bala, Ayana Bala, Yuddha Bala. So we will first look at Devaratri Bala. According to this system, according to this system, the Sun, Moon, Saturn, and Mars are powerful during midnight. So certain planets are very uh, powerful uh, in, in night, certain planets are powerful in the noon and the daytime. So Moon, Saturn, and Mars are associated with the power. Uh, display the power in the midnight and in the new noon time they are powerless sun jupiter and venus are powerful during noon and they are powerless in the night moon is, uh, mercury is adaptable and it is considered always powerful so this means that in every chart mercury gets maximum 60 sashti amsas uh, 60 sashti amsas uh, moon and Sat moon saturn and mars are given 60 sashti amsas only if the planet is uh, only if the person is born in midnight or zero if the person is born in noon. Sun, Jupiter, Venus get 60, 60 shashyams as if the person is born in noon and zero if the person is born in midnight. So uh, then we go to Paksha Bala. Paksha is uh, equal to 15 lunar days. Uh, we have two Pakshas, namely uh, Shukla Paksha which is waxing and Krishna Paksha, which is waning of moon. So uh, the benefits, uh, plan benefit planets like Jupiter, Venus, and moon, uh, the, the are good. And uh, uh, when the, the, if they are these uh, people are born in uh, uh, during the phase of the eighth day of, uh, of the break half of the lunar month. So eighth day of the dark, uh, dark half of the moon, lunar month. It, these are all the periods for that the benefit planets, uh, Jupiter, Venus, and the moon, you have good results. And uh, good and also good to influence the Mercury. These beneficial planets are powerful in Shukla Baksha. Malefics are such as Sun, Mars, Saturn, and badly influenced Mercury and badly influenced Moon. Uh, and with the person born in the from the eighth day of the dark half of the lunar month to the eighth day of the bright half of the lunar month, so they are powerful during this. Uh, this planets are malefics are powerful during Krishna Paksha. So the benefit gets more sasti sasti amsas if the person is born in Sukla Paksha, and and the, and, uh, the malefics uh, for malefics it is less if a person is. Born, born during the Krishna Paksha, the malefics gets more points and vice versa. The maximum amount of maximum number of uh, shastiyamsa to be gained is 60. The value of shastiyamsa shastiyamsa of malefics plus malefics of uh, sorry value of shastiyamsa of benefits is always 60. Shastiyamsa of moon are uh, always doubled. Tribhaga uh, then Tribhaga uh, bala.
So what is Tribhaga Bala? So in Tribhaga Bala, the day is uh, divided into three equal parts. So we have 60 hours. The uh, then uh, the uh, sorry 60 uh, uh, in uh, 24 hours. It is equally divided: eight hours, eight hours, eight hours that way. So uh, when it is divided in three equal parts. Uh, In this system, Jupiter is always uh, given 60 Shashti Amsas. In addition, if a person is born during the first part of the day, Mercury gets 60, Ams 60 Shashti Amsas. The first part of the uh, 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 three Bhagavala period, or first part of first part, if Mercury, uh, in case of person born in first part of the day, Mercury is assigned a 60 Shashti Amsas. If someone is born in uh, born during second part of the day, sun gets 60 Shashti Amsas. If a person is born in the uh, last uh, part uh, last part of the day, Saturn gets uh, 60 Shashti Amsas. So naturally, the benefits uh, uh, Mercury uh, uh, the person if a born is person born in the daytime initial. Uh, Part of the day, he gets uh, highest uh, sashti amsas. So Saturn being malefic, if it is, it is born in the night time. Uh, in, the, in the last part of the uh, day, he gets maximum uh, sashti amsas. If a person is born in the first uh, part of the night, the moon is given sixty sashti amsas. If a person person is born in the second part of the night, Venus gets sixty sashti amsas. And if a person is born in the Later part of the night, Mars gets 60 Shashti Amsas uh, in the order. So then we go to Abdabala, the planet which is the lord of the year gets 15 Shashti Amsas. Lord of the year is the planet which belongs to the first day of the year. For example, first day of the year, if it is Sunday, then it is it is ruled by, Sunday is ruled by sun. So which receives 15 Shashti Amsas according to this method. Masabala, the planet which is the lord of the first day of the month in which a person is born, receives 30 Shashti Amsas. Same way, Varabala, if a person is uh, born on a particular day in the in a week, uh, it is in each week, each uh, day in a week is uh, assigned to a planet from uh, Sunday, uh, uh, sun to uh, Saturday, Saturn. So in that order, uh, if a planet, uh, according to accordingly, when a person is born, uh, the person receives fifteen Shashti Amsas for the, those respective planets. This is uh, regarding the Varabala, Horabala. A day is divided into twenty-four hours or horas. Each hora is ruled by a planet. The first hora is ruled by a planet, which is the rule of the day, uh, which rules the day. Exam, for example, Monday, for Monday, the first hour is ruled by moon, Tingal, we say in Tamil. In, uh, the uh, moon is uh, ruling that uh, for us. And then in the, in this, in the, in the order, uh, according to the days of the week, the horas will continue. Say, for example, the Monday, Monday, in Monday, on Monday, the moon hora starts, then, then, then followed by the Mars, that is Tuesday, then by Mercury, Buddha, uh, then uh, Guru, Guru, so and so on till Saturn. So if the, if the person is born some distance from the equator, if a person is born at, a, at some distance from the equator, the horas are not of equal length. The period of daylight consists, uh, contains 12 horas and uh, period of day, uh, night time consists of 12 horas. The rulers of Hora, when you are born, get 60 Shashti Amsas. So this is the rule. Then Ayana, Ayana Bala. Ayana Bala is uh, nothing but the planets. Uh, uh, it, is do, it is to do with the, decl the declination it has from the equator. If a planet has zero declination, uh, Ayana Bala is 30. For, uh, for, for Venus, this Venus, Sun, Mars and Jupiter, the northern declinations are added to the value and the southern declinations are subtracted 
uh, from the value. So for Saturn and Moon, it is all it is the other way around. And for Mercury, declinations are always added. The maximum amount of shastiyams has to be added and to be gained is 60. The Ayanabala of the Sun is always doubled. That is the rule. Yuddha Bala. Concept has, this concept has to do with the planets which are in war. The, the one, uh, uh, when the planets, two planets are at war, uh, uh, and, uh, at war in the start, then we have to calculate the total Sthanabala, Digbala, Kalabala, till Horabala of the two planets. And then find the difference between the, uh, the uh, difference of the, this total achieved by these two planets. And at this point, after the arriving at the difference, it is divided by three uh, between the, uh, it is divided by, by the difference, it is divided then divided by the difference between the diameter of the two planets uh, concerned, which are involved in this, uh, on this scale. Then result gives the Yuddha Bala. One, one second, sorry. So, the result of this calculation is the Uddhavala. This must be added to the Kalabala total of the winning planet and subtracted to the total uh, to the Kalabala of the losing planet. This is the rule. So, what we have to do? Find out the Uddhavala and it should be added to the Kalabala total uh, to Kalabala total of the winning planet and subtract it from the Kalabala total. In, in case if there is losing, uh, losing planet, it is subtracted from the Kalabala of the losing planet. Okay, then uh, we go to the uh, next uh, next uh, bala, which is Cheshta bala. Planets which are relatively slow among the retrograde planets, which is among the retrograde planets, uh, get high Cheshta bala value. For example, when the uh, in case of uh, slow moving planets like uh, Saturn, uh, the Uh, the planet, uh, the planets which are relatively far, uh, fast get a chestabala, uh, low chestabala. The sorry, the reasoning uh, is that slow moving, slow, slow moving planets are able to focus their energy because of uh, they they stay in one place. In chesta in chestabala. Uh, when we talk about Cheshtabala, slow moving planets like uh, 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 Saturn, when they when they move very slowly, they they uh, they garner their energy more uh, because they in, they stay in one place for longer duration. So and then they get higher Cheshtabalas. But if they go faster, the the uh, they, they, uh, at, a, at a relatively average speed, the uh, they are not able to focus uh, much, so the the chest is lesser. So in in the in, in case of Saturn itself, when it gets slow, chest is uh, more, and if it is move faster, uh, slightly faster, and compared to normal uh, uh, speed, then the chest is low. So, so, so this is how it is applied. Sun and Moon do not get Cheshtabala values. They move fairly uh, in a regular pattern, do not retrograde. They do not re retrograde. So no, there is no Cheshtabala. Uh, then next uh, is the nicer Bala. Each planet gets certain amount of Shashti Amsas according to the luminosity it has. Sun is the brightest planet, it gets 60 Shashti Amsas. Saturn is the faintest uh, planet, so it gets uh, 8.57 Shashti This means that the amount of Shashti the planet receives 
according to naisargika naisar bala naisargika bala is uh, in every chart the same only so it is fully assigned uh, if a person is born with saturn he says naisargika bala uh, is uh, always 60 for uh, wherever uh, over uh, for all people for in case of sun in case of saturn it is 8.5 so that is how it is then drik bala drik bala is called the aspect of sun string if a planet is aspected by a benefic planets it, it reduces the positive shashti amsa value if a planet is aspected by malefics it gets negative drik bala points in calculation of drik bala value uh, the calculation of drik bala value is complicated because it, uh, it, it we have to take into account of the partial aspects uh, also partial aspects of a planet also so we know that sun moon venus uh, mercury mercury aspect uh, the seventh house from it same way uh, saturn uh, aspect the uh, third and tenth house uh, apart from the seventh house uh, then uh, uh, then uh, planets like uh, mars planet uh, mars is uh, mars aspect the fourth seventh and eighth house so the 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 uh, degree of uh, the um, strength of uh, the planet uh, uh, with its due to its aspect is more in this uh, positions the point is uh, the point which uh, which is 120 degree from the uh, uh, sorry now for the purpose uh, for this purpose if it is if say the planet is planet planet uh, in aspect if the planet aspect the uh, aspect the zodiacal sign in opposition 180 degrees from it that is seventh uh, house uh, uh, it gets maximum 100% the point which is 120 degrees from, from the planet it gets partial uh, partial digbala drigbala which is 50% 120 degrees means what uh, uh, the the fourth fourth house and uh, planets which is in the uh oh sorry fifth house aspect i guess oh, fifth house uh, fifth house fifth house kendra and then if the planet is at the 90 degrees it gets uh uh 50% the planet gets some uh, percent and if the planet which is in 60 degrees it gets 25% and if it is in 30 to 150 30 or 150 degrees the planet gets no no aspect at all so this is the, the rule so what is the, what is important to notice that if a planet uh, if a certain planet has a negative drigbala value then it is mainly under the influence of malefics uh, and if it has a positive drigbala it is under the influence of benefics by looking at the shadbala score we can immediately see a planet is under negative or positive influence so by depending upon the position of the planet then total shadbala finally shashti amsas are added up and we get the shadbala value in shashti amsas and then uh, it is divided by 60 uh, to get rupas it is important to realize that the influence of certain shadbala factors is much greater than others simply because amount of shashti amsas to be gained by certain shadbala factors is much greater than by others for example an amount of shashti amsas which can be gained by a factor uh, stanabala is lot more than what can be gained by a, by digbala so so the shadbala is gained by uh, these various uh, factors we start uh, spoken about uh, like in the order of stanabala digbala cheshtabala and all these things stanabala has the uh, it gets higher uh, uh, factors uh, or points as compared to the other uh, uh, other uh, balas so they are not equal so that is the thing something else uh, and, uh, and and also according to shadbala rules every planet need a certain amount of rupas to be strong according to uh, so mercury needs seven rupas jupiter needs 6 and 1/2 rupees uh, moon needs 6 rupees and so on uh, these values are seen as the minimum requirement for 
a planet to be very uh, to be strong so what we do we divide the uh, total chadbala in group as uh, with the minimum requirement as we discussed above to get the chadbala ratio the most interesting thing is about the chadbala ratio is to see whether the planet has more or less uh, than the minimum requirement and how much uh, that is so generally astrologers uh, uh, attach more value to the chadbala uh, points uh, in group as and also the uh, the ratio uh, the, the in the order order in which you can also study the strength of each planet in, by rating them so that is also uh, very useful which you will see later in the example sample horoscope ishtapala then ishtapala and kashtapala ishtapala value of a certain planet is calculated uh, uh, in, in, as follows the uchapala we have uchapala and cheshtapala we have add multiply when you multiply uchapala and cheshtapala then square root of the product is find found out and uh, we get uh, a value between 0 and 60 on in the, in the uh, common factor which is there uh, in the, this in this way the sun and moon do not have a cheshtapala so still we have to find the cheshtapala for these planets uh, there is a way to uh, find the, find it and for the sun uh, uh, we add 90 degrees uh, to the sun's longitude and then once the values are arrived at if it is more than uh, 180 degrees it will be subtracted from 360 degree, 360 the, the the resulting factor is the sun's cheshtabala and this value is divided by 3 uh, uh, to uh, uh, get this value in shashti amsas same way moon uh, cheshtabala for arriving at moon cheshtabala sun's longitude is subtracted from the moon's longitude and then the value we get is more than 180 degrees it is subtracted from 360 degree 360 and then the resultant value is divided by 3 to get the shashti amsas so uh, to explain the kashtapala we calculate the 60 uchabala 60 uh, cheshtabala next we calculate the product of the product and then square root of this product to uh, arrive at the kashtapala value so higher the kashtapala value uh, uh, more will be the uh, uh, the planet planets uh, in a, uh, not in a, it's a it's a, we can say the pro, it is uh, not powerful uh, more, more kashtapala if it is more ishtapala, the uh, the planet gains the value. Uh, the more the ishtapala value the planet gets, more it will be powerful. Then we now we will go to a sample, two sampled horoscopes. One is Bill Gates and uh, Ratan Tata. Bill Gates, uh, if you see the Bill Gates horoscope, Bill Gates was born on uh, 28th October 1955 at 8:50 a.m. 8:58 p.m. Uh, and uh, his uh, lagna lagna is ascendant is uh, miduna miduna and then uh, his uh, you see the second house uh, is owned by moon uh, moon is placed in in the 10th house it is in the strong position and uh, the ninth uh, his ninth house is Saturn, tenth house, uh, tenth house is uh, ninth house Saturn is in the is exalted. Eighth and ninth lord is Saturn. It is exalted in the fifth, and along with uh, lord of fifth uh, uh, Venus, uh, and also uh, Sun is along with Sun, which is lord of third house. So. And the eleventh, eleventh uh, lord is Mars. It is in the fourth, aspecting the, uh, aspecting the, the tenth house. So the positional uh, strength of Mars, Moon, and also uh, Venus, they are all in the very good position. Uh, when Saturn is exalted, it gives maximum results. Uh, then 
Venus is also uh, Mercury is also in fourth fourth house. It is in Mercury exalted, aspecting the tenth uh, shows the success in his business. So so forth. So we'll go now to the Shadbala values. Shadbala of Moon is very high, one thirty eight. Uh, then um, Mars uh, Venus is the very highest, one forty one. A moon and then followed by Saturn. They are all very uh, very high value. Ishtapala of Moon is very high. Mercury is also very high. Jupiter is high. Now we how it is to be analyzed. We will see. If you look at the planets which we have which have which have a uh, low Shadbala in the chart. Uh, for Sun, Sun is debilitated here. Sun is debilitated here in the fifth house. So and the Shadbala score also uh, lowest eighty five. And also, Ishtapala is very low, three point two. Sun is uh, uh, not uh, supportive, and uh, it is debilitated. And Mars also in uh, not okay. Mars, you see Mars, uh, it is one fourteen Shadbala strength, and uh, Ishtapala is thirteen point three, which is lowest, uh, just uh, uh, lower. And compared to the high values of Moon, Mercury, and Jupiter, they are much low. So, Sun and Mars are not in a, uh, a good position for him. And a lot of problems he had to do. Uh, he had to do with uh, sexuality, love making, and financial deals are are all caused due to uh, these two planets. So, which is reflect, uh, reflected in the strength of uh, as we arrived in the Shadbala and the kind of Kashta Bala. Uh, Ishtapala, low low value of Ishtapala. Here, high score value of uh, score of uh, Shadbalas in in uh, Shadbala in percentage for Venus, Moon, Jupiter, and Saturn. Venus is one forty one, Moon is one thirty eight, Saturn is one thirty two, and also uh, Jupiter is also one nineteen. Not bad. Uh, His istabalas of Mercury and Jupiter are very high. You see here istabalas. Uh, Mercury is forty-two point two, Jupiter is thirty-eight point six. It is third in the order. His kastabalas, uh, the kastabalas of uh, his kastabalas of, uh, of Venus and Mars are high. So, as we in the first point we discussed over, he had uh, faced with certain issues regarding the law making, sexuality, and financial deals. So his Venus Kastapalas are very low, or low. He was successful in big business as Venus has put position position thing. How Venus is in the fifth position, so he is fifth from the and also occupying his own house. So the somewhat it is compensating the Kastapalas and the low Shadbala values. Uh, Shadbala values higher, but low uh, low Kastapala value for Venus. So it is compensated in the positional uh, uh, position in the uh, in the horoscope. Positional it gets positional strength. In case of Mercury, so the Shadbalas are uh, relate uh, Shadbalas and relative rank is ranking is low. Is Ishtapala of the Ishtapala of Mercury and the positional strength of Mercury was very high, and it is also exalted exalted in the fourth house and aspecting the tenth. It is exalted in the fourth aspecting the tenth. And the Ishtapalas, Shadbala, uh, uh, Shadbala is slightly low, and uh, Ishtapala is very high. So these are all there are some compensating factors to in this horoscope. So we will go to the next horoscope that is Ratan Tata. Ratan Tata, uh, his ascendant is uh, Danu Rasi. Uh, his uh, Seventh house is owned by Mercury. He is in the Lagna, and now with uh, Sun, uh, which is the Lord of the ninth house. Lord of uh, ninth house and Lord of seventh are in the Lagna. Good uh, positioning. Jupiter is weak. Lagna Lord is in the second debilitated. It has become weak, and uh, in the Kendra, uh, Saturn is there. Uh, Saturn and uh, Jupiter are uh, have exchanged uh, houses, and uh, 
Moon is in the 11th house. Moon is uh, present in the 11th house. Now we'll go to the Shadbala uh, scores. In Shadbala, if you see, Mars is uh, 143. You'll see wow, Mars, where it is, it is in the third house. Mars is in the third house. And uh, it, it is 143. Mercury is uh, 125. And Saturn is, uh, Mercury, Moon is also 125. Saturn is 122. Ishtapala of Mars is very high. Ishtapala of Mercury is high. And uh, Saturn is slightly less. So now if you see, uh, Moon, Ishtapala is very low, Kashtapala is more. And also the Shatbala strength is also less. So he has faced a lot of difficulties due to Moon. We'll see how. We had high Shatbala of Mars, Mercury, Sun and Saturn. And uh, the horoscope of Ratan Tata reveals harmonious alignment between the ninth, ninth Lord, the Lord of Fortune, Tenth Lord, uh, la, la, tenth la, tenth la, Lord of Profession, uh, Mercury, and the Lord of Eleventh House for Gains, Venus. All these three planets are in his Lagna, see, uh, in Sag Sagittarius. Lord of Seventh, uh, Tenth, tenth la, Seventh and Tenth, Mercury, Lord of uh, Ninth, Sun, and Lord of uh, Eleventh, Venus. So it shows he has got achieved phenomenal success in his birth. Business, it, uh, it is obvious. Uh, then Mercury, uh, Mercury's potent placement in Ratan Tata's chart contributes to his success as a businessman. How Mercury is uh, in the Lagna, Lord of Seventh and and also the Shadbala of Mercury is somewhat okay, and the uh, Ishtapala of Mercury is very high. And uh, this is not only uh, okay. Then. Uh, during Mercury Mahadasa, with Venus Antardasha, he attend, ad, attended the uh, multiple uh, programs to become the one of the most uh, successful chairpersons of Tata Group concerns. His success in business can be discerned from this. Also, Ishtapala of Mars and Mercury are quite high, and Kastapalas of Mars and Mercury are low. The planet Moon was very uh, was marked in his horoscope. The same became the reason for his big ups and downs in his life. When he was 10, during the Moon Bhukti, in the Jupiter Dasai, uh, the Shadbala, uh, uh, he had a uh, low, and also he had a low Shadbala, uh, he had a very tough time in, the, in, in his life. Uh, then, uh, so this is how we, uh, we have analyzed the horoscope of uh, Sri Tata and uh, Mr. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. So from this, we what we uh, uh, see here is it is obvious that higher the Ishtapala uh, than the Kastapala, and higher the Shadbala factors influence the uh, life of a person because the the planets get higher. The concerned uh, corresponding planets which gets higher uh, higher uh, uh, good strength, and during the ruling period of the planet Dasha and Bhukti, they uh, they. Uh, provide the desired re result uh, in uh, in achieving the success. So uh, then we move to residential strength. This is the last factor we have to consider for this. Uh, we have to calculate the Bhava Chakra. Uh, Bhava chart is uh, the chart which works with unequal houses. The reason is that a planet, uh, if a planet is close to the midpoint of a certain Bhava, it is given high residential strength, and if it is located at the edge of a bhava, it gets lower residential strength. A planet with higher residential strength is powerful, and a lower residential strength is weak. So, only thing is, uh, it may be can, it may be noted that Ishta and Kastapala values and residential strength are values which stand on their own, but are not used in the cal used to calculate the Shadbala. So, it is a standalone. Uh, Factors to consider the uh, study and our horoscope, Ishtapala, Kashtapala, and uh, residential thing, as compared to the Shadbala, which has got its own uh, merits and demerits. Conclusion Shadbala is very useful and interesting. Uh, it's an interesting system. 
all kinds of uh, different synth are summarized in a single figure. We can look at the total synth of a planet and analyze them from which factors the strength has come from. And until uh, this day, Shadwala is the most complete and sophisticated system to measure the strength of planets, and therefore it is highly useful. I'll uh, just uh, conclude this uh, presentation with the uh, Shanti Mantra. Sasti Praja, Sasti Pratipala Yantam, Nyayena Margena, Mahim Mahim Shaha, Go Brahma, Go Brahma Nehepya, Shushab Shubhamastu Nityam, Loka Samasta, Sukino Bhavantu, Loka Samasta, Sukino Bhavantu. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a very detailed presentation. So, so of course, yeah, we all know that Sadhbala is a very interesting topic, but it's very detailed, actually. So, only I think this detail is covered in D.V. Raman's book. If you go to the Graha and Bhavabalas, I think the entire book covers this all aspects, actually. So, he made it in a one-hour presentation. So, thank you for that, actually. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank all you. For coming and uh, uh, seeing the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, if you have any questions, like uh, we can take now. Uh, Vikram Shiva. Yes, sir. I have one question. So, consider, I mean, very, very basic question. So, consider if a planet has a higher score uh, in Shadbala, but that planet is uh, uh, is functions as a malefic. Okay, so how 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 are we going to evaluate the influence of the planet? So does it going to yield a positive result or is it going to give us a negative? Uh, uh, it depends upon the placement of the planet, so and the association of the planet. So malefic results are yield, uh, yielding the, if the malefic position is uh, varied, occupies like uh, uh, six to eight and twelve. These houses can cause. Uh, induce the malefic give to give higher malefic, malefic results. So if it is in the uh, if it is for example uh, Saturn is a malefic, but is uh, if it is born uh, in Capricorn sign, and if he is occupying the tenth house, it will give very good house very good result. So that's it. So okay. in addition to what he said, like it's always good to have a higher shatbala. Like even if the planet is malefic. If it has a higher Shadbala, it can reduce the malefic, uh, malefic effect uh, of the planet. Mm -hmm. so, so it's always good to have a higher Shadbala. So it's rather uh, malefic or benefic. OK, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good one, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, one question on my side, sir. So we discussed about the different Bala, Shadbala, Ishtabala, Cheshtabala, etc. Right, sir? So in your analysis, which bala I, mean, I know shadbala is a combination of the i mean arithmetic sum or com, or calculations of all the bala right so which bala would actually determine what is called success or you no know, i mean is there any specific you found in specific bala for example ishtabala is used for this um uh, kashtabala is used for this cheshtabala is used for have you found anything something like that stanabala is very important let's see you mentioned the positional strength is very important for a uh, uh, in a horoscope. So that's why we have come across, if you have seen the slides, so they are specifically mentioning of the Sthanabala. Okay. So, uh, no, I understood. I'm asking. Sthanabala is important. Now, Sthanabala is is uh, covering which aspect of life? Is it like success or career or something? What would you... Depending upon, depend, it, depending upon the placement of the planet and the uh, of this position of the planet in which it is associated. So suppose if it is uh, the placement of planets in the 10th connected with the profession, it will give more success in the profession. In the family, more uh, more attached to the family, and it gives money, Dana uh, Stanam also, second house, and fifth house for children, uh, and so forth. Okay. One more thing I had is if you look at Bill Gates' chart, if you can just flash Bill Gates' chart. Mm -hmm.
You can see the stream? Yeah, yeah. we're just seeing Paksha Balada, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill Gates. Yeah. yeah, so here we've located Mars is in the fourth house, correct, sir? And yeah. uh, Moon is in the tenth house. Moon is in the tenth house. Okay, so it is like uh, Moon would have got a better Sthanabala if it was in the 4th and Mars would have got a better Sthanabala if it was in the 10th. Correct. Um, moon, sorry, uh, can you repeat? Moon, moon, would, have got better moon would have got a better Sthanabala if it was in the 4th yeah. and yeah, Mars yeah, yeah. would have got a better Sthanabala if it was in the 10th. Yes, yes. No, we, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Correct, sir. That I just thought I'd so, yeah. which means here actually, though Mars and Moon have weaker Stanabalas <clears throat> by their positions, yeah. still I think well. you are talking about Digbala, Vikram. I think it's not Stanabala. Stanabala, yeah. 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 correct. So, Stanabala is also, Stanabala is not Digbala. I'm sorry, my mind. No, no. Stanabala is based on exaltation, debilitation, uh, friendly mm -hmm. house, neutral house, or enemy house. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, whereas so, Digbala is a directional stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mars is in the Mercury house, which is an enemy. Yes. Mars. Yeah. So that so way you can do yeah. mm, Correct. So here the Stanabala of Mars is not great uh, because it is in the enemy house. Mm. Uh, even the directional strength is also not great because it's in mm. the fourth house. Correct. Actually, correct. Mars gets highest in the tenth house, actually. Tenth house, yeah. correct. And it's exactly the opposite. Four moon. Yeah. But yes, mm. yes. So, so that's why the Stanabala like. is very important because it gets the cumulative of all. See, that individually, is. when you do the analysis, right, we see whether a planet is exalted, own house, or enemy house. Yeah, we see one. in which, whether it is in Kendra, Trikona, we see mm -hmm. what are the aspect strength. So, all these things are taken care of the Shadbala. Uh, mm -hmm. The directional strength takes care of the position. Uh, the Stanabala takes care of whether it is an exaltation, own house, or enemy house. Then, uh, Drikbala takes care of aspectional strength. So, it is like it is trying to squeeze everything and put it in one single score. So that's why Shadbala yeah. is very powerful. Shadbala is very important. Correct, sir. Yeah. So again, here also if you look at it, so from Shadbala's, uh, can we can we determine, we can say that which Dasa book will be favorable for the person. Correct, sir? Can we, we ah, can yeah. say that? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. See, actually, the Shadbala will tell uh, like which planet is strong. Strong. Then uh, I think he mentioned in the slide where Ishtabala is very important for giving the results in the Dasha Bhakti. Mm. For example, if Mercury is getting the highest Shadbala and if Ishtabala is of, of Mercury is also very good, then Mercury period will be very, very powerful. Like it will give all the best results for this yeah, particular right. narrative. Suppose so, uh, to add, add the, sorry, to uh, sure, sure, sure. see here the comparative charts of Shadbalas, uh, uh, the planets. Now, see, for example, Mercury is the lowest Ishtabala. So, it, if the, during Mercury, if you see uh, this thing, uh, even though uh, the, he was he was, but uh, even though he was having Mercury Dasa with uh, Venus, Venus Bhukti, he mm -hmm. achieved very, very, very good results. Because Venus, Mercury was, uh, overall, it was very good. Uh, see, if you see here, the analysis, uh, the other factors also influences. In in uh, in uh, in this uh, horoscope, Venus Dasa, uh, Mercury Bhukti he had uh, uh, got very good uh, results. So okay. and also is, yeah in fifth it is also in, uh, it is in the fifth house, the position also. So Venus is in the fifth house. So that is the thing. Right. But I have to answer your one more question, like you are asking, like Shadbala refers to any particular aspect of like, like career. Mm. I don't think so, because it's Shadbala is kind of an overall strength we ascertain for each planet. So that whether influencing on career or relationship, that depends upon the, the lordship. For example, if for a particular person, if Venus happens to be the 10th lord, then if Shadbala is also good, then obviously it can influence more on his career. So we can summarize saying that a Shadbala is good. Analysis will help us to know which Dasha Bhakti will be favorable. 
uh, Shadbala combined with Ishtabala. Because I think in the slide, if you see, go to the previous, one of the earlier slide, he clearly mentioned, even B.V. Raman mentions that the Ishtabala factor is to be considered to see how much positive results it can give during its Dasha and Bukhi. Okay. For example, if the okay. Ishtabala of Mercury is high, then during that Mercury Dasha or in fact in other Dasha Mercury Bukhis, it can mm. give favorable results. Yeah. Okay. So in his case, the Mercury Bukti would have been really favorable. Yes, yes. Mercury Bukti as well as Mercury Mahadasha. For example, mm. Moon, highest, highest Ishtabala, Mercury, then Jupiter. I think in, uh, in uh, Ratan Tata's uh, horoscope, mm. see Mercury is highest, highest Ishtabala. Mm. And the Venus is low Ishtabala. So here only the uh, came. Uh, the, right, the, right, right. Correct. You, are, you so mentioned that specifically. Mercury Dasa, Venus under Dasha, he attended the multiple programs to become most successful chairperson of Tata uh, mm. group, uh, group uh, Tata group and sons. So it is the example. <laughs> right, right, right. See, of course, the Dasha always uh, have the higher weightage compared to the Bukti. So that, mm -hmm. that is one more thing. And Mercury and Venus uh, conjunction here the v, uh, in this chart itself, right? The ninth and tenth Lord conjunction is a very powerful Raj Yoga. Mm. Right, Sun and Mercury. And Who was the chart? Bill Gates. Uh, no, no, in Tata. Tata, Tata. Tata's chart. In Tata's chart. So for him, ninth and tenth Lord both are conjoined, right? Ninth is so ninth Lord Sun and tenth Lord Mercury. Yeah. So that's a Raja Yoga. And, and, and of course, eleventh Lord is also there. So it's yeah. particularly good for a business, actually. Right, eleventh is gains, right? Gains mm. from business. 9, 10, and 11 are in ascendant. Yeah, yeah, that's a wonderful combination, actually. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so yeah, probably we need to apply. So of course, I I do include Shadbala in every analysis, like like uh, Shadbala to con conclude the strength of the planet, and Ishtabala is specifically C to analysis the Dasha Bhukti results. So this is very useful too. Like because all analysis you can do it in a minute with Shadbala, because individually you need to see own house, exalted house. Debilitation, then uh, positional strength, everything you can see with one shot plus score, you can come to a conclusion. Well, so that's all inclusive thing. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a kind of an inclusive one. This is it. So that's why shot is very powerful. Actually, it, is, it fascinated me because of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. To make a presentation. Nice one, sir. Very good, sir. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for it. Okay. So I hereby hand over the certificate to you, sir. Uh, so thank you. Uh, congratulations to you for completing the mentorship. And I wish you a very great success in the field of astrology. And I would like you to see more contribution to the field of astrology. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, Mr. Ilangos, uh, Mr. Ilangos, uh, association and his uh, guidance as, is of more value, has added more value to my life. Uh, in the in the field of astrology, because uh, we our life is uh, uh, learning part of learning at a, every stage. So in this pers pursuit of learning, we come across various people in in gaining the knowledge. So uh, uh, until when I uh, when I was learning myself, uh, I was relying on the books and all that. Then I when I was uh, uh, learning through the National Sanskrit University. There are various uh, uh, contributors to my knowledge, and now you have uh, in this in the current uh, path of learning. Uh, it has been very uh, uh, guiding. Uh, you have been a guiding factor to my uh, to gain more knowledge and also gain uh, 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 directions uh, to add more directions to my the, the path of uh, the learning process. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Nice to know that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, let me see if uh, Shiva have any question. Okay, Trikbala. Uh, topic partial aspects. Yeah, actually. So, so Trikbala talks about uh, aspect strength. Uh, so, we all know that 7th house aspect, we all uh, know that it's a full aspect. Then 5th house, uh, I think it is 50%. Uh, then 90 degrees is third aspect, I guess. It's uh, 
Yeah, third aspect, which is 75%, I guess, if I remember correctly. And then uh, the second house, which is 30 degree and 150 degree, there is no aspect, zero. Yeah. So that's what you can say. So full aspect, it's like uh, 60 points. And uh, partial aspect, like half aspect, it's half of the points. Uh, then 75%, I think it may be 45 points. And if it is a zero aspect, it's a zero. Yeah, this was coming on one of my slides. Yeah, it should be there. I, I remember seeing that. 